Hi, I'm Matt Shade Tech. I'm a DJ and producer based in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm also a Dubspot instructor. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an arpeggiator in the environment with some large button controls to control the arpeggiator rate. I'm using this to do drum rolls. You could use it to do arpeggios, really whatever you can think of with an arpeggiator. And because what I'm doing is sending out control change data, you could actually use this for a synthesizer to control parameters in the synthesizer or whatever you can imagine. This is the second video in a series. In the first video, I showed you how to set up air display to use the iPad as a second monitor for your computer, and in this case, using Logic. And so what I'm gonna show you here is how I created uh, the touchscreen arpeggiator setup that I showed in that video. So let's take a look. So what I'm gonna do is I have a, I have it set up here in the clicks and ports layer of the environment. Before we get into the environment, what the environment is, is it's a part of logic where we can manipulate the MIDI signal flow. So we can control all of the MIDI that's coming in from whether that's the caps lock keyboard, whether that is a controller keyboard or a knob or a fader, we can take that and manipulate what it does in logic, right? So one of the ways that we're gonna use this is to have it arpeggiate the note data that's coming in. If you're interested in the environment and learning more about the environment, we do a whole class on it in level five of our logic course for DubSpot and DubSpot Online. And to access the environment, we're just gonna go window, environment, and then navigate to the clicks and ports layer. And so let's actually just, we'll move all of this stuff out of the way temporarily so I can just show you a clean setup of it. So this is what you would see if you just came to the environment in its sort of vanilla state. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and choose new and add an arpeggiator. What an arpeggiator is, is it creates arpeggios, meaning it takes notes that are coming in and plays them at a regular rhythm, right? So you could set it to eighth notes and it'll, if you play a single note, it'll just repeat that. If you play a chord, it'll play the notes in the chord in sequence. So a chord would be when we play more than one note simultaneously, an arpeggiated chord, we would alternate between those two notes at the set rate. I'm actually using it for drums here, which is a little bit of a non-traditional use, but of course you can use this for your melodic material as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna connect the arpeggiator to the signal flow. So, and this is the MIDI signal flow, not the audio signal flow, right? That's an important concept. I'm gonna take this input view module here and draw a connection between it and the arpeggiator. And then I'm gonna draw a second connection between the arpeggiator and the sequencer input. Now, all data, all MIDI data coming into Logic is gonna pass through that arpeggiator and be arpeggiated. Now normally what we would do is highlight the arpeggiator and then over here we can change the resolution, right? So we can change how fast the arpeggiator is going manually. If we wanna be able to change that in real time in a performative way, that's sort of the goal of this setup. So when I wanna control the arpeggiator, what I wanna do is I wanna change the rate and in the arpeggiator, we have the capability to MIDI map that control. Now, there are a range of numbers from zero to 127, which is the standard MIDI control change value. And each of those corresponds to a different arpeggiator rate. Now, they're a little bit random. The, the one that corresponds to eighth notes, which we're gonna use, uh, happens to be eight, which is convenient and easy to remember. Once we get to 12th notes, that's gonna be number 10. And then as we go up, we basically just have to figure out which numbers are which. Um, and I just did that before I made the video by trial and error. So if you're having a hard time finding that, just try sending different numbers to the arpeggiator and watch which rates that it sets the arpeggiator to. The next step is to create some buttons. I'm gonna do that by going up to new. And they're actually under fader, the submenu fader. And then I'm just going to choose a button. Now you'll notice when they come up, they're a little bit small, right? So if you highlight it, you'll see there's a little square here. And if you drag on that, you can sort of make them as big as you want. And this is one of the big uses of this, especially in a touchscreen environment where things are a little bit less precise than the mouse, being able to have big buttons is really handy. So what I'm gonna do now is connect this button to the arpeggiator. So now the this button, and let's call this button, we'll double click on the, the text here to label it, we'll call it 1, 8. 
and that's going to be the rate that we're going to send to the arpeggiator. So we've got it highlighted, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose in the arpeggiator a controller base. What the controller base does is it tells us at what number, controller number, the arpeggiator is going to start looking for control data. On the button, I'm going to specify what controller number this is going to spit out. So I think if I want to have the button set to controller number 90, I'm going to need to tweak the controller base here a little bit. What you'll see if you highlight the arpeggiator and click the button, you'll see the changes that are happening. What I'm going to do on the button first is, if you see down here where it says range, what we can do is we can set the range of numbers that the button can output. I'm going to tell it to output a single number, right? So I'm going to set the range. Uh, I'm going to use the number 8 to start because if I remember correctly, that will tell the arpeggiator to spit out eighth notes. I'm going to set the lower limit to 8 and the upper limit, right? So now what we've done is we've created a button that can only say 8. Whatever we do, anytime we click on it, it's just going to say 8, which is what we want, right? Because normally it would say 1 or 0 or switch back and forth between two states. We just want it to say 8 all the time. So now what I've got is I've got my button that's going to send 8 to the arpeggiator. Now I'm just going to highlight the arpeggiator here and click the button. Okay, so now that we've got our button set that's sending 8, the way that controller base works in the arpeggiator is it says that's where I'm going to start listening for control data. So if we set the controller base to 90, the direction up here is going to be the parameter that we're going to be controlling at 90. What I want to do is I want to go, uh, let's say 90, 91, 92, 93, 94 will be the resolution. So I'll go to my button, set my controller base to 94, and then let's try that now. So I'll just set this to some other value. Let's just set it to 1, 1, and send. There we go. So now what we've got is we're sending our 8 to the arpeggiator, and we can see, because we see it changing when we send that value, it is sending a, an 8 to the resolution parameter. If we want to test this real quick, we can hear, if we change it, now we click our button and it's going to revert to eighth notes, right? So that's working. Now what I've done here and that I won't go through step by step in the video is I've just set up four buttons, right? I've got one that sends the value 10, uh, which is going to send a, a twelfth note, one that sends the value 13, which will be a sixteenth note, and one that sends the value 14, which will be a 24th note, right? So all I did to create those, I'll just create the second one, is just copy the button you want, hit paste. It's going to ask if you want to replace the current selection. The answer is no. And But what it's going to do is create a second button that's connected. So I'm going to take this 1.8, relabel it as 1.12, and then I'm going to change this range here. If I just drag from the lower range, it'll adjust both. Whoops. And I'm going to set it to 10. So now, let's just highlight our arpeggiator to make sure this is working. And then, there we go. So now we've got a 12th note, back to 8th note, back to 12th note. And then you can just go ahead and create as many buttons for as many different parameters as you want. And I really encourage you to get creative with this, right? Because what we're doing is we're just making buttons to send controller values. That could go to a synthesizer, uh, controls in the mixer, really whatever you want. You know, I just think doing an arpeggiator here is kind of fun. So now that we've got this set up, I'll just give you a little example. So what I'm going to do is I've got my arpeggiator connected. I've got my iPad where I can control the buttons using touch control. I'm just going to start the sequence playing. Hold down a note on my caps lock keyboard. That's running at eighth note. And so we can create some little arpeggiator performances that way. If you'd like to learn more about Logic, you can check us out at dubspot.com. We have a 48 class course that we offer both at our school here in Manhattan and online via dubspot.com. 
And if you'd like to learn more about me, you can check me out at mattshadetech.com and I'm also on SoundCloud. Thanks for watching. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.